Hi, my name's Jeff Hutchings, and this is my beginner's guide to using Cakewalk by BandLab. First, let's create a project and learn how to add and remove tracks. Open BandLab Cakewalk. On the start screen, click on New Project. Then click on Basic. In the track Arranger pane is two tracks. An audio track and a MIDI track. The audio track is numbered as track 1 and the MIDI track as track 2. To delete a track, right mouse click on the track number and click on Delete Track from the pop up menu list. To add a track, at the top of the screen, click on Insert. Then click on Audio Track in the drop down menu list to add an audio track. Or click on MIDI Track in the drop down menu list to add a MIDI track. Next, let's add a MIDI drum track using the built in Virtual Drum Kit. To add a drum track, click on the Virtual Instrument icon in the plugin browser pane. Double click the Drums folder. Then double click on the S1 drum kit and click OK on the pop up options window. A new track has now been added to the track arranger pane that includes the virtual drum kit. Now that we've added a MIDI drum track, let's choose a drum kit. Click on the virtual instrument icon on the drum track to open the virtual drum kit pop up window. Click on the drums to hear them. To choose a different drum kit at the top left of the pop up window, click on default.prog. Then double click on a virtual drum kit from the pop up list. To see all the virtual drum kits, place the cursor at the bottom of the pop up list window. So the cursor turns into a double headed arrow. Then drag the cursor down the screen. A scroll list bar will now appear on the right side of the pop up window and you can scroll through the list. Once you have chosen your drum kit, click on the X at the top right of the pop up window to close it. Then click on the X at the top right of the virtual drum kit pop up window to close that. OK, so let's now create a drum beat and to do this we're going to use the step sequencer. To create a drum beat, right mouse click the drum track in the clips pane. Click on view in the pop up menu list. Then click on step sequencer. The step sequencer pane now appears at the bottom of the screen. Move the cursor to the top of the step sequencer window so the cursor changes to a double headed arrow. And drag the cursor up the screen until all 12 rows of the step sequencer can be seen. The bottom row is the bass drum. To hear which sound is on which row, click on the section of the row that has the keynote in it. Click on a square to add a beat. Right mouse click on the same square again to remove a beat. Click on squares in different rows to add the different drum sounds. Click on the play button at the top of the step sequence of pain to hear the beat.
click on the play button again to stop the beat playing. When you are happy with your beat, click on the X on the Step Sequencer tab at the bottom of the screen. The beat now appears on the drum track. To play the song, click the play button at the top of the screen. To stop the song, click the stop button. Now that we have a drum beat, we can loop the drum beat to create a longer drum beat track. To loop the drum beat, move the cursor to the end of the drum beat so it changes to a double headed arrow. Then drag the cursor to the right. Looping the drum beat is an easy way of extending the drum track, but for a more professional way of extending the track, I recommend using copy and paste. Right mouse click on the drum beat in the clips pane. Click on edit from the pop-up menu, then click on copy. In the copy window, click on OK. Now click on the end of the drum beat in the ruler at the top of the clicks pane to move the track position marker to the end of the drum beat. At the top of the screen, click on edit. Then click on paste. To complete the drum beat, let's change the speed of the drum beat by changing the tempo. The tempo is measured in beats per minute, or BPM for short, so 60 BPM is 60 beats per minute. Therefore, 120 BPM is 120 beats per minute, and twice as fast as 60 BPM. To change the speed of the drum beat, at the top of the screen, click on the tempo. Now either use the plus and minus to change the tempo, or simply type in a new tempo number and press enter on the keyboard. Now let's add a MIDI instrument track. For this demo, I'm gonna keep things simple so I'm going to use the built-in virtual electric piano instrument. To add a MIDI instrument like a MIDI piano, double click on the piano folder in the virtual instruments browser pane. Then double click on the S1 electric piano and click OK on the pop-up options window. A new track has now been added to the track arranger pane that includes the MIDI piano. Click on the virtual instrument icon on the MIDI instrument track to open the MIDI piano. You can now select different pianos the same way as you did with the drum kit. With the MIDI piano track added, we can add some notes, and to do this, we're going to use the Piano Roll view. To add piano notes to your song, right mouse click the Piano track in the Clips pane. Click on View in the pop-up menu list, then click on Piano Roll view. The Piano Roll pane now appears at the bottom of the screen. Click on the piano keys to hear the notes. Use the scroll bar on the right side of the pane to move the keyboard up and down the octaves. Double click on the grid area to add a note. Right mouse click a note to delete it. At the top of the piano view pane, click on the note icons to change the note length.
In the Piano Roll view, we can use the auto quantization function to lock the notes to the beat, or we can turn the auto quantization off and create a more human playing style. At the top right of the Piano View pane, click on the grid icon. Click on the snap resolution to unhighlight it to turn off grid auto alignment of notes. Click on the snap resolution again to highlight it to turn on grid auto alignment of notes. Right mouse click on the snap resolution and click on the note quantization you want. For instance, clicking on a quarter means notes you add to the grid pane will automatically align to the nearest quarter note position in the grid. Changing the snap resolution or note length does not affect notes you have already added to the grid. To move a note, move the mouse so the cursor is over the note and changes to a four-headed arrow. Then drag the note either to a new position in the row, or to a different row to change the keynote of the note. To make a note longer or shorter, Move the mouse so the cursor is at the end of the note and changes to a two-headed arrow. Now drag the cursor to change the note length. When you are happy with your notes, click the X on the Piano Roll tab at the bottom of the screen. Now let's set up an audio track for recording vocals. We already have an audio track, that's track 1, so we'll set up track 1 for recording vocals. To record an audio track, click on the track number. On the left side of the screen is two tracks in the bus strip pane. The left track is the audio track with the track name and number at the bottom of the track. The right track is the master track. Near the bottom of the left track, click on the input and click on your sound card or audio interface in the pop-up menu list. Then click on an input channel of your sound card or your audio interface. Now that we have an audio track set up, let's record some vocals. For this part you're going to need a microphone and I recommend turning off your speakers and using headphones while you're recording with a microphone. In the track arranger pane, click on the red dot icon on your audio track to arm it for recording. Then at the top of the screen, click on the red record button to start recording. Then click on the stop button to stop recording. You If you're not happy with your recording, at the top of the screen, click on Edit, then click on Undo Recording. You You 
If you are happy with your recording, click on the red button on your audio track to disarm the track from recording. Now that we've created a song, let's save our project to the computer. To save your project, click on File at the top left of the screen. Click Save in the pop-up menu list. Then enter a name for your project and click Save. Then click OK on the Project Information window. Finally, let's close the project. If you want to open your project again, you can find it in the Startup screen. To close your project, at the top right of the screen, click on the X. Your project will now appear in the Recent Projects on the Cakewalk Start screen. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button. Cheers.